Coming up on Wavelength, a rate case compromise between LCRA and its wholesale customers. LCRA kicks off a program to plant 100,000 trees. Also, our line crews return from some hard work in the Virgin Islands, and LCRA employees help give a little girl a new home. Those stories and much more next on Wavelength. From the Lower Colorado River Authority, this is Wavelength. Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of Wavelength. LCRA is in the process of filing for a net $26 million rate hike with the PUC, an increase that is needed to retire the debt associated with the Cummings Creek mining project. The need for the increase is not necessarily being disputed by our customers, but there may be some disagreement over how the new rates should be structured. The interesting twist there is that the proposal on how the new rates should be structured was written by the wholesale customers themselves. LCRA's wholesale customers organized themselves into four committees like this one and spent months studying each issue relative to the proposed rate hike and rate design. Each committee was balanced with representatives from both co-ops and city utilities, big customers, little customers, those with industry loads, those primarily residential, putting together a rate compromise package. Uh, there were votes, there were deliberations, Committees approved things, uh, there were compromises. The whole membership of the Wholesale Customers Association approved this package in December. But then they allowed another month for all the cities to, customers to deliberate further and they came back and re-approved it in January. I think what you have there is a reasonable compromise reached by reasonable people. You have a ma vast majority of your wholesale customers in favor of it and you've never had that before. I think the committees, not only this one but the others, have worked very, very hard with the LCRA staff and had excellent cooperation, not telling us what to do, but providing these committees with facts and figures and really trying to come to a compromise, the best thing that would be for all of us without hurting anyone. And I think that's what they did. The biggest controversy apparently will center around how plant and equipment cost or capital cost are charged in the new rates. The proposed changes are aimed at more evenly spreading plant and equipment cost among all customers and to encourage conservation, not only during times of peak electric use, but all the time. Some disagree with the proposed change. The proposed rate design is a disincentive to conservation by means of load control and to industrial development. And it discriminates against high load factor consumers such as ourselves. The changes in rate design don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're not making such dramatic changes that truly load management is just truly going to be abandoned, as has been portrayed by some of the speakers here this morning. I think if you got each of them back up here and asked them that if these rates were adopted, would they still cycle their switches next year? And would they install that next switch on a hot water heater out in their system? I think all of them would have to tell you truthfully that yes, LCRA's demand charge will still be such that it makes sense to try to load manage out there in the system. The proposed rate case also includes a provision for LCRA to reimburse some 25 wholesale customers who, over the years, have built an estimated 900 miles of transmission lines that benefit the entire LCRA system. LCRA would lease those lines as a way to reimburse customers for those construction costs. The rate case is being filed with the PUC now with plans to put the new rates into effect by this October. LCRA has kicked off Grow For It, a campaign to plant 100,000 trees in our service area over the next five years. The kickoff involved simultaneous tree planting ceremonies in each of our 10 water district counties, including the planting of this eight foot tall Texas red oak at the Travis County Courthouse. I want to congratulate the LCRA. Uh, in the last few years, I, I see this entity in our community as becoming a real leader for clean water and clean air. 
and uh, we congratulate you all on the course that you're taking. It's a very sensible approach uh, and one that's in the real public interest and in our regional interest. We have seen LCRA take a leadership role in a number of areas and this is simply one uh, and they've shown that they're not just a business, just a utility, but someone that cares about the environment and the community and these kinds of programs best typify the kind of uh, cooperative and community spirit you see coming out of LCRA. Each of our water district counties received a hundred trees from LCRA to plant in their parks and other public areas. Travis County officials chose Paleface Park at Lake Travis for their first installment. Former Cummins Creek project manager Dudley Pylan has been named FPP plant manager. Dudley has been with LCRA for 15 years and assumed his new position February 26th. FPP produces almost half of LCRA's electricity and has nearly 500 employees. Drops below 19.5. These LCRA employees are suiting up in response to a potentially dangerous situation. An unknown gas is leaking from a storage building nearby. These people are all members of a newly formed LCRA emergency response team made up of volunteers from throughout the agency. Fortunately, in this case, there was no gas leak. This situation was part of a training exercise. The program included some 40 hours of classroom instruction and very realistic disaster simulations. The instructors are from the Extension Service at Texas A&M University. They have been trained and they deal with instruction not only in hazardous material cleanup but in spill, oil spill controls and, and firefighting scenarios. This class is devoted mainly to the hazard response to chemicals in the workplace so that our employees can contain it and also not risk any of our employees to some of the dangers. The emergency response teams are being formed as a result of a directive from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. LCRA held an informational open house in Kerrville recently to answer questions about locations for a proposed substation there. The open house included extensive maps and diagrams and plenty of LCRA personnel to answer any and all questions. This event is just one part of an increasing effort by LCRA to improve communication and goodwill between ourselves, our customers, and the people we all serve. Oh, I think it's a great idea. We need this because we've been having a lot of controversy on this thing in our area. Well, I like the idea of having a chance to see what you're planning to do and uh, see what we think about it and take some comments. I think that's a good idea. Yes, I think it's very good and the people have been very informative. They've been very good about answering any questions that you might have. This informational type event will become a standard in the future for all major substation or transmission line construction. 15 LCRA line crewmen and 75 tons of equipment are back home after almost two months of hard work in the Virgin Islands. LCRA was part of an emergency effort to restore power lines destroyed last September by Hurricane Hugo. Following the storm, about 90% of the homes and businesses in the Virgin Islands were without electricity, and several thousand miles of power lines had to be restrung. Is the job finished? No, it's... it's uh probably another year before they get full phone service and uh, most of the, uh, I'd say 98% of the power is back on but there's a lot of uh, destroyed houses and stuff that because there's no place to hook up electricity there's not any there. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Well, my wife and kids are going to get a big hug and then I'm going to go find a pizza. <laughs> Crews from LCRA and nine other utilities work 12 to 14 hour days, sometimes seven days a week. Their salaries and expenses were paid by the Virgin Islands Water and Electric Authority. LCRA employees joined recently with hundreds of other people in Central Texas to help change the life of one very special little girl. This is six year old Patty Carnes. She has spent almost all of her young life in Austin's Brackenridge Hospital. Patty was born with a rare condition which left her without the use of her arms and legs, and she requires a ventilator to aid her breathing. In 1987, Diane Stacy and her husband Ken of Portland, Oregon read about Patty in a national magazine and inquired about adopting her. But they were told by the Texas Department of Human Services that her condition would not allow it. DHS recently reconsidered their position and contacted the Stacys to see if they were still interested. 
They were, and now Patty has a new family. She's a very, very special little girl, and we're going to miss her a very great deal. But at the same time, we're so overwhelmingly excited at the wonderful thing that's happened to her. And seeing her smile, which just lights up your whole life when she smiles at you, she wants to go home. Even though the adoption was final, there was still the problem of expenses and medical equipment. Thank you, and the LCRA, and the community for their generous outpouring of love and support for this very special little girl. LCRA Employees United Charities Fund donated $5,000 to help buy a specially equipped van for Patty. The combined generosity of Brackenridge Hospital, Travis County Commissioners, and some 400 businesses and individuals have made this trip possible for Patty. Not surprisingly, LCRA will be intensifying its efforts to encourage water conservation. And one of the programs you'll be hearing about is our new Model Cities program. Richard Gaylord has a report. Water. Many people take it for granted, turn on the tap and out it comes. But growing populations and increasing costs for water and wastewater treatment plants are straining the ability of many communities to meet demand. That's why the city of Llano has teamed up with LCRA's water efficiency department to meet this problem head on. The shower heads are metal, and so when you screw metal to metal, if you don't have something in there like Teflon tape, they may leak. This group of students and parents from the Llano 4-H Club have volunteered to deliver these water conservation kits to every home in Llano. Well, this is the first step in, a, in a, us developing a comprehensive water conservation program and uh, we're going to just continue with the help of LCRA to do that and be a model city, the, one of the three in the LCRA territory, the, the west one. And uh, of course, uh, we're, we're going to uh, uh, try to get people aware of w wasting water inside and outside the home and get them to where they use it in, in a most useful way rather than waste it. Experts say that each home participating in the program can save nearly 10,000 gallons of water a year. This is not only a savings on your water bill, but it also decreases the load on sewage treatment plants. What we're doing today, though, is, is really part of a package program. We're also looking at water rate design with our rates department, uh, a comprehensive education program, kind of centered on major rivers, which has already been introduced in the schools, uh, changing their plumbing code to require very high efficiency plumbing fixtures and new construction. Uh, just really a full range of efforts, uh, including the, the LCRA Leak Buster program eventually. Personette says that if all residential water customers in Llano install these water saving devices, over 11 million gallons of water can be saved in the first year. The outlook for summertime lake levels at Lakes Travis and Buchanan is not very bright right now. A two year drought has Travis 12 feet below average for this time of year and Buchanan some three feet below average. If spring rains are below average, these two reservoirs could drop to levels that haven't been seen since the 1950s. In 1987, it was the biggest damn birthday party in Texas, celebrating Buchanan's 50th anniversary. Now, on April 7th, LCRA will mark the golden anniversary of the Tom Miller Dam with a huge celebration including tours of the dam, free riverboat rides, a large LCRA exhibit area, and top-notch entertainment. This will be a fun event for the whole family. If you'd like to volunteer for a few hours work, call Beverly Seffel. Well, that's this edition of Wavelength. Thanks for being with us. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.